Welcome to Johnny Gray's kitchen. This kitchen is 20 years old. In fact, 20 years old, almost, to, 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 to a day. I did it on a budget. It was the first time I ever did a kitchen using these sort of soft curled shapes. And, um, well, 20 years later, I haven't really made any changes, so I suppose that says something. There's a few things I might do there. What would you do differently? Well, this, the way it's divided with these four different countertops is very functional, but, it, and it's particularly good, this low level one with, with young kids, because they could use it to cook on and prepare food on. They could also hide underneath, and they, the dog had these to make little kind of, these put weights on here and have sort of blankets and sort of stuff, and make, make a little kind of cubby there. And it was great to have them in the kitchen, so it's sli it slightly out of the way. But now, they're no longer that age. Um, I probably would have this a little bit higher because it's a little bit um, too low for any kind of food display. But otherwise, I mean, it's, as you can see, it's useful if you've got tall appliances because you can sort of see into whether the toaster's burning or without burning your eyebrows. If your toaster's right up here, you look in, always expecting to sort of see something. You might get a bit of a singed eyebrow. <laughs> so actually, it's, it's probably sensible for it to take the same eye. Now I'm going to use this low-level service. And actually, I, just, I do have to take a little bit of credit. These low-level services now have been very widely adopted by a lot of the kitchen manufacturers. And um, they certainly are um, very practical. Because imagine if this was all one level and you had your appliances on the same level as this. Things would, you know, you clock things here and they might move over to this side. So often this area of prepping would be compromised. Whereas in this way, it's very clear. So what else would I change? Um, I'd like a bigger cooking um, area, really. But what can you do when you've got a space that's already constrained? You can't. You can just stick with the space. So how have you used curves in this particular kitchen? Um, well, imagine this, this, this just, it's just this taper off here and this taper off here. So you've effectively lost about, I don't know, six or eight inches of square inches around here of work surface. So you think, well, maybe that's annoying. But actually, just the fact it's very slightly curved um, means you approach it in a different way. And it means people, when people walk around here, they don't get a sort of um, a thing at the corner of their eye saying it's sharp. And believe it or not, even sharp corners like that send very small subliminal messages to basically um, sort of, well, say, I'm a sharp corner, watch out, avoid me. And it alerts a different part of the brain. So it makes you much more um, re uh, unrelaxed as you're walking by. So it's just slight, very slightly you have to do this. So to some people that's probably fine, but to me it's something that, it makes the whole passage and the whole use of the kitchen just a lot smoother, easier, more pleasant. So do you have a favorite? That's why it's looking nice. Do you have a favorite part of your kitchen? Um, yeah, my, my favorite part of the kitchen is being right here and being able to, well I know this is a bit of a jungle in front of me of, of pots and pans, but being able to see the long view across the downs. In fact, not only is it jungle of pots and pans, but the trees have grown up and it's all got a little bit um, overcrowded. But you've still got a lovely connection to the garden. And when these French doors are open, which they are a lot of the summer, the, the terrace and the kitchen work as one space. No, I think that's fantastic. That's I, I wish everybody would have because it gives you such a lovely feeling of being connected to the garden. And actually, and most of the work that we're doing now is sort of almost making kitchens connect more with uh, with the landscape. Rather like the wonderful way and the capability around the landscape, the, the, um, he had this idea that you didn't have any garden at all, but the landscape came right up to your front door, right up to your, literally the doors of your, um, or the walls of your house. The idea now, I think, is that you want to have the, the garden coming right up to your house. You don't want to sort of, you don't want to sort of, a whole bunch of kind of disruptions in between. You want to sort of seamless flow. And that is something that everybody, um, it's all about the project I say, um, um, we're incorporating into um, our spatial design. So how much of the furniture in here is custom designed and how much, I know that this is well, an older, you've integrated some older antique furniture as well. Well what happened when we, when we had this space, this was, where I'm standing was a garage and this here was the wall which we obviously took out and put in a, a steel beam. There was a one of those 60s, it was a 60s integrated garage. There was a big lift up um, door which came you know, right across here, which was jammed in position. I think it had been jammed for about 10 years. I don't think it ever really kind of 
shut it because he got canned. It was quite sort of ramshackle. Um, and obviously we didn't want a kitchen to be right at the back, so by opening this up into what was a little, but there's a small sort of potting shed type room here, and then there was a bedroom just here. So we basically put all these, we put the French doors in, um, put the terrace in, we put that window in quite recently, opened the space up. We've got about 36 square metres of space, um, which has been used in quite a lot of different configurations depending on what stage the family's at. We've had a sofa in here, we used to get the kids dressed in the morning, we used to have a big carpet down here so the kids could play um, in the kitchen as we were cooking. Um, and in here, there's the, the remnants of the Gray family sort of dressing up cupboard, which as you can see is mostly military gear. <laughs> and uh, it's quite strange when um, it's not something that I personally um, have any, ever had any desire to do, is to dress up in military gear, but most of my kids have been around the woods, and boys particularly, you know, love playing with guns and weapons, so off they go, and they can go for hours at a time in the woods, and all you need to do is to open that window and give a shout, and they come in for lunch. So it's quite a good little scene, really. But yeah, that's, a, that's still a, a dress-up cupboard. But no, I mean, I think, I th I think that, that this kitchen's just a little bit too small, and it's a little bit dark to me. Um, uh, so, obviously putting in the windows helped a lot. And when we put the windows in, to answer you, go back to your question about antiques and things, I put the windows in, I sized them so we could, we could carry the two key pieces that we wanted to install. Mm -hmm. One of them was that dresser, which was the very first, the first antique I ever purchased when I was running my antique business when I was a student. Um, we, we discovered this dealer who used to um, trade slightly dodgy antiques. When I say dodgy, I don't mean they were stolen, but they were kind of often had slight problems with them or they weren't considered to be very valuable or something like that. Well and this, I don't know why, I, I, as soon as I saw this piece, I knew what it's actually very early, probably dating about 1760, 1780. And do you see the way the back planks run horizontally? Well, they stopped doing that in about 1750. So you can tell it's of an early age. And you can just look and see how it's got the original brassware. It's got a lot of patina, a lot of age, where it's worn. Um, particularly um, good piece because it's got um, just the front legs, which means it would have been fitted into a kitchen where, um, obviously, it probably would have been made to suit a specific kitchen. Um, so that had to come. And then this piece over here, it's a beautiful Welsh food cupboard. And so I built this, it doesn't, it looks kind of, as if it kind of casually sits there, but actually we built this wall here to sort of make this, to use all this space for storage, but to make this feel as if it really belonged. Um, we've made a few modifications in the, over the years um, to the space. We added this um, small uh, annex on to allow us to have a second cooking area, which we've now taken out. Um, but it's a very little storage area, as you can see, and it's got this what we call a grid cupboard, which is a very practical, shallow depth um, cupboard for storage purposes. Very um, fully used, full of junk and stuff, but very carefully sort of um, sequenced. So you've got things which obviously you get a lot of flavour transfer with spices and herbs. So teas in here, um, strong spices in here, jams and condiments in here and so on. And this, when we built the extension, we designed around a small little viewing window so we could see people coming up the drive. Oh, the other modification which, made, which I think is really nice is this collection of junk up here. This is the um, what we do, which you should do this now. This is um, a recent addition. We've got so many nice pots. I really wanted to. Um, Do you want the do you like the idea of this white tea? I like that. Yeah, it's really good. 